How is it that every single AliExpress PC build I found on YouTube looks horrendous? There must be something I'm missing, right? Like these are all experienced builders, yet their PC came out looking like something you would find in a McDonald's Happy Meal. Well, all of that changes today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna be building a PC using only AliExpress parts. And the only difference here is that when I'm done with it, it's not gonna look like something you would find in a local dumpster. For those who still live in their grandmother's closet, AliExpress is a massively popular website that sells pretty much everything from G-strings to PC parts. And believe it or not, a lot of people buy their PC parts from AliExpress because why pay more when you get the exact same part on AliExpress for cheaper? I've also decided to do this challenge at the perfect time because currently the AliExpress Double Eleven Global Shopping Festival is going on, which means that there are gonna be some extra discounts I can take advantage of up to 90% across the entire site. This is gonna come in very handy to keep under the $1,500 budget. So I did have a budget of $1,500 to spend on AliExpress. This is before shipping, and the goal is to build a really nice looking micro ATX mid-range system. And I feel like AMD is the best route to go. Uh, so for the CPU, I did pick up the uh, Ryzen 5 5600. This is the non-X version because we're gonna save about 20 bucks or so and still get pretty much the same performance as you would on the X version. And funny story actually, this is $10 cheaper on AliExpress than it is on, um, on Amazon, I checked. We did get a sealed box, so I'm pretty confident there is an actual 5600 in here, <laughs> not some random CPU. So we just gotta make sure that it works. I was gonna say we do have the included cooler, but we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use a, an aftermarket one. Another reason why I went with AMD is because there are way more selection of AMD boards on AliExpress than there are Intel boards, believe it or not. Speaking of the motherboard, we're going with the colorful B550M Gaming Frozen. I went with this board for several reasons. Number one, uh, the price, the aesthetics, and all the features it offers. Uh, the MSI B550 Mordar was my first choice, but that was $15 more, and you pretty much got the same features as that board with the colorful. So it didn't make any sense going with the MSI. Plus, I've done a build with this board like a couple years back. I don't remember when it was, but I've used this board before on the B450 platform, so I'm very familiar with it, and I know how reliable it is. Plus, it supports Ryzen 3rd gen right out of the box, so you don't even have to flash the BIOS. The box did came dented though, so I'm a little worried about that. So I just hope that none of the components got damaged. Looks to be in uh, good condition. We even got a seal in the back, so that's how you know it's not used. Oh yeah, that's a nice board. Such an underrated board, to be honest. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's even got four dim slots. So there's room for upgrades later down the line if you decide to add two more sticks, so that's good. So far, so good, guys. Nothing arrived damaged. Everything was sealed in its original boxes, and I got the correct parts. So let's hope this continues. You're a dirty little motherboard, aren't you? You like it when I pin you down, huh? Yeah. All right. I should stop tossing parts, God damn it! And up next, we've got the memory sticks. This is called a Valkyrie from Asgard. I feel like if Thor were to build a PC, these were the RAM sticks you'd go with. Interesting naming. I've never even heard of this brand before. So we're going with a 16 gigabyte kit. So two eight gigabyte modules running at 3600 megahertz. I don't know the seal timing on here, unfortunately. It's not even labeled anywhere on the box. And I don't think it was even labeled on the website when I was buying it. So one uh, well, of the lights just went out, nice. Oh, <laughs> this is legit. I've never seen memory sticks come with gloves. <laughs> what are you trying to do here, Asgard? You know what, I'll play along. I'll play along, why not? All right, that's enough of that nonsense. I wish you guys would have sent bigger gloves, but I do love the unboxing experience. Definitely different. Oh, these are some nice looking sticks, I gotta say. They look very similar to the Tough Ram from Thermaltake, but I think these look a lot cleaner. 
Oh man, this looks so good. Already it looks better than half the AliExpress PC builds you'd find on YouTube, you guys. I got a good feeling about this one. It's gonna look really nice. Uh, now for the cooler, I'm going with the Johnsbo HX6200D. This is one of the more expensive parts from AliExpress because I bought it for 50 bucks. Um, I know I could have got a better cooler or a cheaper cooler from Amazon or Newegg for like 20 or $30, but this was the best one I could find. That would also fits inside of our case. So obviously we're going with a micro ATX case. So I needed something that was low profile. Oh yeah, this is gonna fit nicely. I even double checked the clearance numbers. So this, this is supposed to fit inside the case without any issues. And it's gonna keep our CPU nice and cool as well. I mean, it doesn't take much to keep the 5600 cool. So this was definitely one of the better choices on AliExpress. At least they included thermal paste. Thermal Grizzly? Oh wow, these guys did not cheap out, you guys. We got a tube of Thermal Grizzly. I definitely did get what I was paying for. That's for sure. Guys, I think we just went into our first problem. The thread on this screw is stripped, unfortunately, and it's not threading in all the way um, this is a problem because if we can't get this through, then we can't install the cooler. <sighs> improvise. We gotta improvise. I'm gonna try and force it through with some pliers. We do need this, unfortunately, otherwise we can't install the cooler. If we can't install the cooler, we have no PC build. Okay, I think this is working. We got it, guys. I mean, if you don't run into any issues while building a PC from AliExpress parts, is it really an AliExpress PC? I've never had to tighten the air cooler in the back of the motherboard before. This is definitely a first. Oh yeah, that's a clean cooler, you guys. That is such a clean cooler, look at that. I almost forgot about storage, you guys. We're gonna toss in a Samsung SSD 980. It's a one terabyte M.2 SSD, and that's basically what we're gonna use to load our operating system and a few games for benchmarking at the end of the video. This is actually a really good deal on AliExpress. All right, so this is the case I'll be going with. I definitely spent some time looking at all the case options on AliExpress. Um, there were some interesting case choices on the website, but ultimately decided to go with the C26 for several reasons. It's got an interesting look to it. This is not the color I ordered. Why is it in black and white? Did I get bamboozled? Five minutes later. So only the sides are white. <laughs> and the inside's black. Uh, that's fine, you know what, that's fine. That's fine, it can, it's, it'll still work. It's still gonna work out because obviously the entire motherboard tray section here is gonna be blocked off by the components the white component, so it's still gonna look like a nice white and black uh, themed PC. So here's the handle of the case. It actually sits on the top here. You can mount this practically anywhere you want because there's a bunch of holes here, so you can decide the exact location. And then when you're done building a PC, you just carry it like you would normally a suitcase or a lunchbox. It is the ultimate portable PC. You guys can take this to school, to your computer class, play CSGO with your boys, or take it to camping, I don't know. You can pretty much take it wherever you want. This actually explains the steep price. They ship over a screwdriver with the case. It's actually not a bad screwdriver. I'm not gonna use it though.
Oh my God, you guys, this is a super tight fit. Okay, motherboard is officially secured to the case. You know what, just for fun, let's see if I can fit in a 4090. Nope, <laughs> it doesn't even wanna get in. Yeah, no, this ain't it, Chief. This ain't it. Sorry, bud. All right. This build, you guys, this build. Oh, oh, it's looking so good. Oh, it's looking so good. I think this will be my streaming PC, actually. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's actually shorter than the 4090 Founders Edition, interestingly enough. But yeah, I do want to install the power supply next so I can work on some of the cable management. And then we're gonna pop in the graphics card. But we have no fans in here, guys. We have zero fans, well, except the fan for the cooler. We have no intake fans, which is bad for airflow. So I'm gonna see if I can fit in two fans, at least one fan on the bottom for intake. Um, so I'll do that after we install the power supply. Now, in terms of the power supply, AliExpress doesn't have a nice selection of SFX power supplies. There were some shady ones in there which had like no rating, so I decided to skip on those and ultimately go with the Lee and Lee SP750 because everyone knows Lee and Lee. This is a reliable power supply. It's white, it's gonna match the color scheme of the build, and it's fully modular too. So, I mean, it was pricey. I think it was like $200 I spent on this, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta, you gotta pay a little bit more to get that quality. Oh, such a cute power supply. Look how freaking tight this thing is. It's gonna fit nicely in here. Oh yeah, we're gonna have plenty of space. Let's go. Yes. You have to remove so much just to get access to the PSU bracket over here. How do I get this thing out of here? Oh, I see. Okay. So this entire front plate needs to be removed so you can get access to the front screw that's holding the power supply bracket in place. Oh my God, there's one more screw, isn't there? Oh my God, dude. We gotta remove this one too. Yeah, there it is. There we go. Got the bracket out. So let's go and hook this up to the power supply. All right, last but not least, we're gonna pop in the graphics card. I was only able to fit an RTX 3070 inside the budget. I have never heard of Yestin, but there's a lot of positive reviews, so I'm trusting there's an actual 3070 in here. Worst case scenario, we're getting a GTX 1050, <laughs> which would suck. But, you know, I, I, I got pretty good feeling about this though. It's got a really nice white and purple theme. The purple, I'm not too much of a fan, unfortunately, but it's the only white themed card I could find on AliExpress. Oh, got some stickers. And there it is, ladies and gents. Oh, it's actually a mix between purple and blue. Okay. Wait a minute, is this even gonna fit? Oh, this is such a nice card. So they put like a custom backplate on here and even a custom shroud. It looks nice. Yeah, it's not bad. I just hope it's gonna fit. Um, I did check the clearance numbers on both the case and the GPU, so I mean, it's supposed to it's supposed to fit. No, 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 no. It's gonna fit. You lied to me. I'm gonna make this fit. I don't give a damn what it's gonna take. There was plenty of clearance. I'll even show you guys the product page. I measured it. It's the cooler, the cooler's getting in the way. Yeah, I, I, I think I can make it work. It's just the cooler. 
All right, let me, let me try removing the cooler and then see if I can fit the GPU in first. I probably should have done the GPU first. Great, the cooler is stuck on the CPU. The thermal paste is gluing both of these together. This is an absolute nightmare. It's not coming off. If I can remove the fan, I think that will be, that will give me enough space. Oh, it does come off, let's go. I'm making this card fit in here. I don't care what it takes. Bruh. I'm so glad AMD changed their socket for the M5. I should say one last time. Dude, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Who's to blame? An absolute joke. Why is this not fitting? <laughs> I'm losing my freaking mind. Is this even gonna fit? I don't even know if this is gonna... Oh. 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 oh man. I don't care. I'm bending this. I'm gonna bend it and I will bend it back. Oh God, what have I done? What have I done? What is this build becoming? We had such a good start. Oh, I made it fit. Oh man. That was testing my patience, you guys. I was this close and grabbing this and literally just throwing out the freaking window, but I managed to fit the GPU in. Very tight fit, by the way. There's like no wiggle room whatsoever. <sighs> now I wanna add some fans. I wanna get some intake fans in here. I did pick up a couple of these uh, Cool Moon fans from AliExpress as well in white. Um, I wanna see if we can add a few intake fans on the bottom. It does look like we have just enough clearance on the bottom of the graphics card to slide these in. I wanna put in one. If I can fit in two, I'll, I'll put in two, but I wanna put in at least one so we can get some, uh, some airflow in there. Okay, yeah, there's, there's definitely some space. Oh, it's gonna be tight, but we can make it fit. We can make it fit, boys and girls. I'm experienced in tight spaces. I just hate how thick they make the damn USB 3 header cables. It's really difficult to like bend. I'm gonna try something different here. I'm gonna use this USB 3 header cable extension instead. These are way more flexible and they're a lot thinner too. So maybe I can plug this in and kind of just tuck it away so it doesn't get in the way. You guys think I could fit in another fan in here? Um, but I really want two intake fans in here. Unfortunately, the bottom connections are not letting the fan go down anymore. As you can see, I'm pushing down on the entire board if I do that. So we'll just stick to one intake fan. It's better than none. So the case also comes with some dust filters, so I want to add a couple of them on the bottom here. And then one more up here. Nice. Oh yeah, look at this, you guys. It's almost the size of my toaster. Let's put the final piece on here.
can't say I like the side panel design. I wish this was uh, on a hinge instead of four thumb screws, but can't really complain. I'm in love with this build, you guys. <laughs> Look at the size of this, I can't get over it. Oh my Lord. It's so freaking light. It is so freaking light. Okay, let's plug this thing in and power it on. I hope to God it turns on. Um, after what I did with the GPU, I'm having doubts that it might power on, but let's just, let's just hope everything goes according to plan. All right, here we go, will it boot? God, I'm so nervous. Oh, I see the fans. Everything's spinning. It's a good sign. Such a clean build, I can't get over it. Still nothing. Oh my God, the display port cable's not plugged in. <laughs> this almost gave me a heart attack. There's still a chance. There is still a chance. Let's go, baby. Let's go. I did put in my second M.2 drive in there that has all the games installed, so it's gonna save me so much time in benchmarking. All right, guys, the build is finally done, and if I'm being honest, it came out looking really good. A little better than I anticipated from the beginning. I had some doubts with the AliExpress parts, but overall, absolutely loving the way it looks. We're going to jump into some gaming benchmarks and take a look at temps as well, because I'm really curious to see how well the CPU and the GPU will perform, considering we only have one intake fan on the bottom. So I'm kind of worried about temps, but we'll take a closer look at all of that. The total cost of the PC came out to 13.89 and 22 cents before the shipping and before the discount code. So since I spent well over $165, um, I was able to get an extra $25 discount during the Global Festival. I mean, it's not a crazy huge discount, but obviously every little bit helps. We did get the cooler basically half off with a discount. So the new total with a discount came out to $13.64 and 22 cents. I was able to stay under the $1,500 budget successfully, and I had another $100 to use, so I just bought myself a new keyboard. The Keychron K3 V2, which I'll be using to test out the PC. I also decided not to install the handle up here because I feel like it ruins the whole uh, portable, minimalistic aesthetic. Besides, it's so freaking small and lightweight, I don't even need a handle to carry it. All right, let's take a look at some temps before we jump into gaming. We're gonna look at idle temps first on the 5600. It is averaging around 56.6 degrees Celsius. We do have peak temps of 71 degrees, which is a bit toasty, but it does drop back down to around 55-ish. So. Not terrible temps, considering you only have a, a single intake fan on the bottom, and look how close it is sitting on top of the graphics card. It's a little too uncomfortable for me, but I mean, idle temps are, are whatever. It, the, the real test is when we're actually gaming on this thing. So looking at the temps on the graphics card, it looks like the RTX 3070 is averaging around 53 degrees Celsius with peak temps of 60.3. So yeah, this is a bit high. Uh, especially when the car is not doing anything. I don't think the fans are even spinning. Yeah, the fans aren't even spinning and it is peaking at 60 degrees Celsius. So I'm actually afraid to game on this thing, but uh, let's jump into some gaming and see how loud it gets. All right, first game we're gonna test out is Warzone. This is gonna be 1080p in uh, maxed out settings. As you can see here, everything is pretty much on high. FLB is maxed out at 102. Here we go. The temps aren't looking good. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Both the CPU and GPU are a bit toasty right now. 80C on the CPU, 81C on the GPU. I think the airflow in this case is pretty terrible, which makes sense. I mean, we only have a single intake fan on the bottom. Frame-wise, we're not doing too bad, actually. I mean, even with the high temps, we're not experiencing any sort of thermal throttling. 
Looks like both the CPU and GPU actually dipped down quite a bit. So CPU is running around 74 degrees, GPU at 73. So the temps did cool down a little bit. Let's try Overwatch 2 next. This is a less demanding game, so I don't expect the temps to be really high. Uh, graphics wise, we are on Ultra, and this is 1080p. So already the CPU is much cooler. The GPU is a bit more toasty. We're getting close to ADC on the 3070. Why is no one healing me? Frames wise, we're actually doing really well. Damn, we're hitting above 300 FPS consistently with the 3070. All right, Fortnite is up next. Let's do a little bit of Fortnite, why not? We're in 1080p, epic settings. Rendering mode is set to performance. We get the most frames as possible. And yeah, everything else looks good. Wow, we're getting some really nice frames. Three to 400 in high settings. And temps aren't looking too bad either. Around 70C for both the CPU and the GPU. And we're pushing at least 300 frames on Fortnite. Oh, that was a nice shot. I've never made it this far. There's one, there's one other person. No, I died to the damn freaking force field. I'm such an idiot. I didn't even know what that damn thing did. Oh well. Last but not least, we're gonna take a look at Valorant. We're gonna be playing in 1080p under high settings. Frames are doing really good. Four to 500 FPS, maxed out settings. And temps are looking really good too. Nice. Well, CPU, GPU staying on their 70C, and we're getting some really nice frames. Okay, so final thoughts on the build. I do love the case design. I love the way it looks. I love how portable it is, but it's lacking in airflow. Like seriously, it doesn't even have a cutout in the front which I guess doesn't really matter because you can't install fans in the front anyways, but if you're gonna be building in this case, I strongly recommend going with a mini ITX board instead. That will free up additional space underneath the graphics card so you can slide in two 120 millimeter fans. Unfortunately, with the micro ATX board, this spot over here where the fan's supposed to go in comes in contact with the bottom headers. So the USB 2, USB 3 headers, as well as the front panel JFP1 connectors are coming in contact with a fan, so I wasn't able to slide in an extra 120 millimeter fan. And this case needs as much cooling as you can throw in there, guys. As you saw during gaming, CPU and GPU got pretty toasty, and that's because there's nothing really moving the air out of the case. We have no exhaust fan, so I do recommend adding two additional 80 millimeter fans on the top as well, just to help exhaust all the hot air out of the case. So if you do add two 80 millimeter fans on the top and additional 120 in the bottom, then you will have neutral uh, air pressure inside the case. We got two intake and then you got two exhaust pulling all the hot air out and that will definitely help improve the thermals a lot. Even with the high temps, the PC wasn't thermal throttling. As you saw during gaming, it was running perfectly fine. No frame lag whatsoever. I mean, sure the, the PC gets pretty loud. This is what the PC sounds like, by the way, on full load. I'm gonna bring my mic really close to the PC. Quick, quick keyboard test. Yeah, it's pretty loud because all the fans are pretty much maxed out, but if that doesn't bother you and the temps don't bother you, then this is a pretty cool case to build in. My only gripe with the case was trying to fit in a damn GPU, but looking at the manual now, apparently there's a way where you can remove a part of the case to make it easier to install the graphics card. And I had no idea you could even do that because the manual is not in English. So I didn't understand any of it, but yeah, apparently there's an easier way of installing the graphics card. But yeah guys, other than that, super happy with the way the build came out. I'm gonna rate it an eight out of 10. 
because there were some things I could have done differently to improve the thermals, like go with the Mini ITX board and add three additional fans. But I wanna know what your rating is in the comment section. Let me know what do you guys think about the build and what things you could have done differently to make it look better or perform better. As always, I'll drop a link to all the parts I used in the build from AliExpress down below if you guys wanna check it out. If you are shopping on AliExpress during the uh, 11 Global Shopping Festival, make sure to use the discount code on the screen to save you guys some additional money. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.